Hi there. If you're new around here, welcome. I am Stacy, the mixed media and caustic artist behind Studio CC. If you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for joining me once again this week. In this week's video, I will be painting this painting here, doing some life stuff and things like that, but mainly it's a painting video. So um, come along with me and let's paint. Hey there, um, it is week three. Can you guys believe it? I can't believe it. Of the paint, 100 paint days through your view. And if you're not sure about what that is, I will put a link below to a blog post um, and you can read all about it. Um, it is early this morning, as you can see, it is dark out. So hopefully the lighting isn't too bad. But I thought I'm, I'm gonna do some experimenting this week with this particular painting. And I thought I'd flip the camera around and show you, but then also kind of do like a little chatty walkthrough with you about it. So I'm going to be experimenting with some soft pastels. And I've done this before in the past, but not in this particular way. And I was watching a little Instagram story from one of my artist friends, Laura, and I will also put her information below. She's an amazing watercolor and pastel artist. And yeah, if you're interested in landscapes and anything like that she's amazing and um, she's also doing the 100 day project so definitely go check her out if you're interested but anyways i saw her one of her stories and i thought an idea kind of went off in my head about using these soft pastels in a similar way that she was in with my encaustic work so I wanted to experiment with that and then also kind of talk about taking or borrowing another idea from an artist and not completely copying them, but just using that idea and making it your own. Cause that's what I'm, that's what's important here, right? We're all learning. Um, there's things have been done 110 different ways and nobody's probably inventing a new way of painting. Um, it's just not out there I don't think because um, everybody's done it all but what's important is taking that little tidbit of information and then making it your own so that's what I'm going to attempt to do this week we'll see if this works out um, and yeah let's stay tuned and see how this goes it's going to be a short day of painting today because I have to run downtown to uh, a couple important doctor's appointments. And um, if you missed the last vlog, you will see in there, um, I explain everything um, about it there, but i um, going downtown to the doctor's. So fingers crossed, we get some good news. But I just wanted to get in the studio real quick and put down some clear and caustic medium onto this panel. I got that painting glued down onto the wood cradle panel and so I'm going to put some clear encaustic medium down on it and then off to the doctor's appointment downtown. Um, I don't know if I'll take you guys really with me too much because I'm not sure how much you can film inside the hospital but maybe I'll try to get some um, glimpses of the hospital outside. It's a beautiful hospital and um, we're really lucky to have a, a great team and of specialists and things like that real close to home. So see where the day goes here. Back from um, doctor's appointments and I got some really good news. So we wanted to celebrate with a dessert, but um, decided not to go out and get one. And so we're gonna make some little tiny apple pie. Here we go. Thank you. 
day three of painting this painting and you can see I have that nicely glued down to the wood cradle panel and as yesterday I said I put down some clear encaustic medium and now I'm just moving on to the wax the encaustic paint rather and I painted this with the soft pastels like you saw earlier as an underpainting so it was never really supposed to be a finished painting just kind of gives me an idea of where I want to place certain colors and also will add more depth to the painting to the fun finished painting rather so i will let you sit back here and watch me paint and here we go day three of painting this painting I would explain what I'm doing with this painter's tape and the circle punch and I'm basically using the painter's tape as a mask I'm trying to get a crisp circle image or circle shape rather for the Sun and as it turns out in the end I didn't completely use that crisp circle I blended it in more but um, you never know and I thought it was a good idea at the time so that's what I was doing with this painter's tape and you'll see me paint over it with the encaustic paint and then I eventually peel that up to have the circle nice and crisp. And coming up here you'll see what the painting looked like here at the end of this day. It's getting there, it's coming along. Pretty good, I think. I'm doing some computer work this afternoon, as you can see there. But I was wondering, I'm looking for some coffee advice. Um, if anybody has any recommendations for good kind of coffee. I, this afternoon, have tried um, this brand, which is quite good, actually. Um, but I'm looking for a coffee that is like not super strong, maybe has a little bit less of a strong flavor to it, where I don't have to put like a bunch of um, sugar and creamer and all that jazz in it. Um, this one I did add some coconut milk to, and it's pretty good, but it's also pretty expensive. So <laughs> um, I don't want like necessarily cheap, but um, 
yeah, if anybody has any suggestions, I'd love to know. Okay, back to work. Day number four of painting this painting. And today, this morning rather, I'm just starting out by picking out some colors because I'm going to be painting the water in on this painting. So I'm rooting through this cigar box here. That's what I keep my encaustic paints in. And this happens to be the blue box. I'm rooting through that, picking out the right colors. And then of course, going through these little paint stick swatches that I've made up with the wax on them to make sure that I have the right blue colors. And now I'm just adding that paint onto my griddle here. I cleaned it off from yesterday because it had all those oranges on it. And if a blue would have got mixed in with oranges, it wouldn't have made a very pretty color. It would have in fact made a lovely brown color. And if you're not familiar with the painting that I'm painting here, it's actually a painting that one of my newsletter subscribers sent me a photo to paint. And I will pop that photo in here so you can kind of get a comparison of the painting and the photo. But I've asked my newsletter subscribers to um, send me photos of places that they live or places that they find beautiful that they've taken, photos that they've taken, and I'm painting them for 100 days. And that is basically the gist of 100 paint days through your view. just came into the studio and I asked him to say this again for the camera so here you go oh good a smooth painting in the words of Arnold it's easier to boff I thought I would explain um, real quick what my husband was talking about when he was talking about easier to buff with encaustic paintings you need to buff them and he usually helps me ship everything out and right before I ship a painting out I make sure it's buffed and you know everything just looks perfect on it so when you buff an encaustic painting it brings out the shine and it really makes it kind of that glass like sheen which I'll show you here but it's difficult <laughs> if I have a bunch of added texture to it and stuff so um he of course prefers the really smooth paintings because um, it's a lot easier to buff for my shipping department um so i'll show you what i'm talking about here as and show you how to buff a painting if um you ever get one and you want to rebuff it so i thought i would demonstrate the buffing process on this painting that i just finished up and basically you just take a soft cloth. I use um, the blue shop cloths that you can get and you just go in a circular motion and buff it. But you can see if there would be like a lot of texture up here, it would be harder to buff this area. And you basically want to buff an encaustic painting to make it shiny and smooth. Sorry about the squeaks there. And I don't know if you can see how that really brings out the sheen in the camera. And then once an encaustic painting is fully cured, usually about six to 18 months at the most, you don't ever have to shine it again. It's just on the new encaustic paintings that you would wanna buff them. And it doesn't hurt if they're not buffed. It's just a matter of uh, personal preference. It doesn't hurt if it's not shiny, but um, I like my painting shiny because you know, who doesn't like some sheen? So there you go. It's just really easy to do and it's super easy to take care of. So I hope that was helpful. Um, and yeah, explains the whole, you know, buffing area. Day five and what I believe is the final day of painting this painting. When I start to get towards these, where the painting's almost done, but not quite, 
I do a lot of stepping back and evaluating and really figuring out what isn't quite right about it, what needs added, what needs taken away, that type of thing. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm really taking a look at the painting, spending a little bit of time with it, and then going forward as to what I might want to add in or take away. So you'll see me adding in some white and I don't video the entire process of finalizing this painting. It's a little bit of a time consuming process and there's a lot more of me kind of standing around looking at the painting <laughs> than there is painting, which I didn't figure you might find all that exciting. lot of little tiny little additions that may not be completely noticeable and I do a lot of kind of taking pictures with my cell phone and comparing and that's what you'll see in this next slide just tiny little adjustments to really make it all come together and be complete and what I feel like is a finished piece I believe this painting is finished. Zoom in on a couple areas so you can see hopefully all of those layers that I've added in. It's so hard to pick up these things on the camera. So hopefully you can get the depth that this painting has. I think this is where I'm going to wrap up this week's video. I hope you enjoyed came, coming along on this um, little weekly vlog adventure and painting adventure. If you have any questions, definitely feel free to reach out. I'm happy to talk about art and anything that you might have a question about. If you have any suggestions for me um, to how to improve these videos, I'd love to know that as well. If you particularly didn't like something or um, just had a question about it or a comment, I would also love to know. So just leave that down in the comment below, comment boxes below rather. Um, if you did like the video, I'd really appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. If you're not subscribed and would like to do so, I also really would appreciate that. So thanks again for coming on this adventure. We will talk to you soon and bye for now.